Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another morning devotional and a chance to experience some inspirational theology. Today is our first segment of our Faithful Fridays, and today we will talk about the cost of discipleship. A common theme for our church as the idea of the intentional discipleship was the focus for our diocese the past two years. Truly an insightful topic, but oftentimes difficult to practice. The concept seeming so simple, but yet it is something that many of us Christians struggle with today. Deadly sins of humanity, such as pride, lust, greed, and slothfulness, overwhelm our minds and bodies. As a result, we lose sight of our purpose, our mission, and the idea of conforming to the nature of Christ escapes our mind. In some cases, it is common for persons to be living in these sins for so long that it distorts their understanding of where they can be failing on being a true disciple of Christ. If we were to take our Bibles and turn to the Gospel, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, reading verses 34 and 35, he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me for those who want to save their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it this passage of scripture jesus makes clear the criteria for becoming his disciple of course this scripture is not new to many of us here watching and listening. Nevertheless, it is important that we have a clear understanding of the depths contained in these little statements. These three simple little instructions that we struggle with. First, deny thyself. What does it mean to deny thyself? It is a common term, it is not a common term, sorry, in today's language. So many occasions we can miss the mark as to what this is telling us. Simply enough, what Jesus was saying is to give God all the glory. To give God all of the glory. In other words, Stop trying to steal God's glory. Many times, we attribute our life's success to the choices we have made, the hard work and efforts that we have, we have put in, the dedication of the long hours to bring us to where we are, to where we are now, and even the things that we do for other people. We boast and we brag, and oftentimes the simple idea of God blessing you with the health, the strength to accomplish these things are forgotten. The ability and talent that you may have been blessed with, with all in the efforts of blessing and helping others. We claim, we claim it all for ourselves. And now the focus is on what we can do for others as opposed to what God can do, is doing, and will do for all who are faithful, who believe, and call upon his name. Denying ourselves reminds us who we are in relation to God. Secondly, take up thy cross. What does it mean to take up thy cross? It speaks directly to all the pain, the hurt, and the suffering that is endured by living for Christ in this world. Many can attest to the various hardships and struggles in which they have experienced. 
In some cases, many have lost their faith, their hope, and their trust in God because of how heavy or how hard the, their cross was to bear. It is common for humanity not to enjoy these kinds of things. And so we always look for and like the easy way out. Our tolerance for things we do not understand, things we do not like, or things we just do not want to be a part of, slowly increased. And the more we find ourselves running away from the idea of taking up our cross. Imagine, we've gotten so bad at the idea of getting rid of taxing situation that in some cases, parents have abandoned, have abandoned children to avoid the discipline needing for raising these children. And quickly, sometimes we put our elderly, our elderly loved ones in geriatric hospitals. And for some, they don't even have the decency to visit them at least once a year. Lastly, follow me. It is important we understand why this statement is the last of the three. Imagine if Jesus had asked them to follow him first and to deny themselves second. It would not seem logical, logical to present such instructions in a confusing fashion. One can feel that they have already reached the ultimate goal. I just have to follow him. He is the one. However, following him here was not to be taken in the literal sense. In the idea of maybe saying, I'm following him, like to say that I'm walking behind him. But it goes deeper than that. It was meaning more that we are to be like him. We are to act like him, do what he did, and love like he loved. For this reason, we understand that we see that Jesus here is presenting a formula for us. That we cannot truly say that we are following Jesus until we have prepared ourselves for denial. And so if we have not prepared ourselves for denying ourselves, we cannot truly say we are following Jesus. If we are not prepared to take up the various crosses in our lives, we cannot truly say that we are following Jesus. It is imperative that we understand, take note, and follow what Jesus has instructed as the true method for being his disciple. This Friday, let these words strengthen your faith and increase your chance to respond faithfully to the call of discipleship. I am the Reverend Scott Jupp. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share. And may the Lord be with you.